I first met Shelly, she just was a lot of fun, um, always laughing, and she was beautiful, and she caught my eye instantly because of that. To be completely honest, what I was attracted to was um, that he he was like the bad the bad kid actually. <laughs> I was the good girl. I I wasn't the one to get in trouble. We dated three years before we ended up deciding that we were going to get married. Right before we got married, we started working with a youth ministry. Steve was actually getting licensed um, to be a pastor. We got married. Shelly was 19 and I was 21. I loved that that I now had a husband I loved, that I was going to spend the re rest of my life with Steve, my high school sweetheart. I led worship. He, you know, was the lead pastor. About eight years into our marriage, we had built a ministry from 23 students to hundreds of kids. And I had a staff with me and just all the things that from the outside looks like success in ministry. Will your grace run out if I let you stop investing? We don't always have those big, bold warning signs. Cause all I know is how to run. Your marriage is in trouble, get help. Cause I am a sinner, if it's not one thing, it's another. It was slowly pulling me away, and there was supposed to be balance in there. But you are a savior, and you take brokenness aside and make it beautiful. It felt right because, you know, like we're working for God. This is what we need to do. In my life, I, I've, I set up a lot of boundaries, but I never had um, kind of a, a guard around my marriage. So ministry started to just take all of my time and all of my attention. All of his affirmation was coming through the ministry. You're doing amazing, you know, you're, that was a life-changing message or, you know, the way that you bring insight and, and some of those things started to allow me to almost become intoxicated. And I began to feel like I wasn't mattering too much in the picture anymore. And so I began to resent the fact that I went into ministry with my husband and ultimately it made me resent God, God as a whole. I never really noticed at first that there was even a distance forming between me and Shelly. So many lies and um, that kept creeping into my mind. Um, if, if you would have never married him, you'd never have been in this spot. Slowly the enemy comes in and starts pulling us to the side and pulling us apart. In the Word of God, it says that Satan has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Through this time, Satan has stolen away from me my joy. He had stolen away my love for the ministry, stolen away my love for my husband. And I knew that things were falling apart. Being the, the pastor's wife, I felt like I couldn't even admit that. I felt like I couldn't even ask for help. You hit a spot where you just realize now it's broken and what do you do? How do you fix it? So prayers are prayed and you, you, you hope that God maybe will intervene, but it just starts to become more and more um, fractured and, and broken and, and, and you get to a spot where you just feel helpless. I found another man that would allow me to speak my problems to him and he had no problem hearing it. He would make me feel good about it. Through that it led to a life of sin and an affair that, that lasted a while and everything within me had just become completely numb. So the day came where my husband uncovered the affair and everything came out. There was a part of me that was so hurt and devastated and feeling like how could this happen to me? But the sad part is there was also a little bit of sense of relief to where I felt like I, now I'm, I'm right before God to end this relationship. This is my chance to get out of the, the hell that I felt like I was in. We both came to the realization that we were done, that there was no, no hope in this, in this marriage. Because when you're lied to, there's a certain amount of betrayal that takes place in your mind where you, know, you feel like, was anything true? I had let so many people down and Satan telling me that, now look at what you've done. 
during that time, I just felt the Holy Spirit really impressing in me to look past my own pain and to see how Christ sees her. And my heart just started to grieve for her soul. And I remember just saying to her, I know that there's no way to kind of recover from this, but I want you to know, you know, how much God loves you. And I remember grabbing her hands to pray. I felt like I couldn't even utter a word to God. There was just a deep darkness. That night we went to bed and I remember waking up pretty early in the morning and just feeling like the Holy Spirit was impressing on me to just go and just, just seek Him. I could hear um, Steve just crying out to God and I knew he was crying out for me. I remember hearing so clear from God to go in and get her. And I went into the room and I just grabbed her by the hands and just started crying out to God. I felt like there wasn't anything that I could say to God. God was doing something in me and doing something in her. I felt God tell me that I needed to get on my face before Him. And I saw such a clear vision of these chains that were attached to her. And I was like, no, I just want her to be free. And in that moment, God did something so miraculous. And I cried out to him in a way that I've never cried out before. And I just had this picture of him taking all these words from his heart that he'd been dying to hear from me. And he just put them right into my mouth. And every one of those words, I just cried out to him. And in that moment, God set me free and I felt like there was a genuine repentance and that he just completely released me and I felt like that was the first time in so long that I was able to speak to him and that he cared to hear what I had to say and a weight was just completely lifted off me. I was able to offer genuine forgiveness and it was three days after finding out that uh, a, a, an affair was taking place, I was able to genuinely forgive. And I remember just um, telling him how sorry I was for everything that I had done. And I was so sorry for how I had hurt him. And I just asked him if he could forgive me. And our marriage has never been the same since then. We just are living in what's new um, because of repentance and forgiveness. Um, and those two pieces are the miracle of restoration. It's been about four years now since the miracle took place. And for the first three years, it was just a time of waiting on God. And during that time, I was really digging into His Word and spending a lot of time in prayer and, and just really seeking out who He is. God to me now is my everything. Our marriage is amazing. We, um, we love each other. Our marriage is a priority. We're constantly working on it and constantly want it to be the best it can be. The miracle that took place within us is that He took something that was so broken and in pieces and because of genuine forgiveness and genuine repentance, He made something so beautiful.